All right, hello and welcome to VOP this morning. I'm Moses Humphrey. Now, the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission says the president, governors, state and federal lawmakers, as well as judges, are due for a whopping 114% salary increase. Plus, what exactly can Nigeria look forward to as President um, Bola Ahmed um, Tutunubu joins world leaders at a finance summit in France? We have these topics in focus this morning and the conversation will kick off in just a moment. In the meantime, you may, uh, would like for you to click the follow button or the like button and subscribe to our page on YouTube. It's Voice of the People TV. If you're watching right now, just click, all right? Now, you can also follow us on other social media platforms, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, at VOP TV Live. Now, first off, we'll be heading into what the front pages are saying. And uh, I have with me, join, uh, joining me, Cyril Abako. Uh, good morning to you, Cyril. Good morning, Moses. Now, Cyril is a VOP in-house analyst. Good to have you on the show. Interesting okay. story we, we have from the uh, cover pages of um, the dailies that we're sharing this morning. From the Punch newspaper, uh, we have this headline, Board's Dissolution. 2,000 vacancies open for APC faithful, Tinubu's allies. 153 agencies, parastatals, others await board members' appointments. Don't sacrifice competence for political patronage, OPS tells president. On top of the nameplates there you have a hearing continues in Dezani's case on forfeited assets. Egberto Kuhn plans tech-driven policing, improved welfare. DSS combs Bowers Abuja home, extends probe to associates. And also we have a Lagos Rice value chain created. Lagos Rice value chain created 2,620 jobs. Sohulu Nakinde elevates Ladoja, 10 others, Ibadohai chiefs to Oba Residents panic as bandits' reign of terror returns to Undo, local government. Labor fumes as RMFAAC hikes politicians' salaries. All right. Uh, okay, Cyril, how do you chime in? <laughs> there are a number of stories that make, that make one chuckle. Mm, Excuse me. Indeed. <laughs> Let me, the story about... Um, the Lagos Rice economy, Lagos Rice value chain, creating uh, jobs. Two thousand about two thousand uh, jobs. Th th these jobs are not necessarily um, poverty alleviation jobs. They are not jobs that leave people out of poverty per se. So, for example, if you read now, they talk about direct and indirect jobs. So, people who are selling oranges to people who are buying um, rice are also uh, people in jobs. Of course, because that's how they calculate people who, who are who are selling. Who are cooking rice and beans near the rice plantation? To uh, uh, <laughs> in any case, it keeps them busy. They you know they tell the an admin is, is the devil's uh, workshop. So for as long as people are going in and coming out and making some change, it's an employment. But I think that what we want is a society where people have the choice to decide what it is they want to do. Mm. That is the hallmark of a of of of, of a, a of, thriving society of a thriving economy. The, there are three words: society economy, civilization, they could be used interchangeably. In any economic thesis, when somebody keeps on saying society, society, he tells you about his philosophy. Others keep using economy, economy, that's about the person's worldview. So, but the, I mean, so much will be said for a simple story about rice meal and so on. What can be done, okay, is that, fine, the government has made an intervention. Of course, Lagos, given its um, coastal identity and given mm. its, the fertility of its land and the possibilities that come with such an environment, they are playing to their strength. The Ikorodu rice mill is a great um, idea in the, in the first place. And where it is now, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not even its ultimate. There's more that can be done if we, if, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, a, a, a whole lot more can be done if we are, when, when government is ready to raise, uh, you know, the, the value chain. So um, it's a good one, but don't let us get carried away by the fact that 
three thousand jobs or five thousand have been created. I mean, what are these jobs? How much? What was the earning power? And in light of a uh, fuel, fuel subsidy mover, so this is just uh, my own way of chiming in on that story. Okay. The other one being the APC. Uh, Moses, shouldn't you and I be in the APC at this time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because <laughs> you know, if you employ. 2000, is it, is it, is it 2000, right? Mm. You now see why these parasites ex why, why these MDs exist. They are there to as jobs for the boys. But don't let us diminish for now. If you have the 2000 party faithful jostling for juicy um, board, board, board appointments, mm. uh, whatever it is, they will now also appoint their PAs and their essays and their everybody, you know? Little wonder, um, so. Uh... The PDP, uh, um, so PDP mem 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 members in Imo State have moved to to the APC. No, they so, will move. <laughs> so, you did say on this show <laughs> that if Kerry is not taken, Nigeria will be a one a one party state. Ah, uh, yes, I remember saying it. Mm. I remember saying it, and I I stand by it. So the, it seems to be there seems to be a lot of benefits uh, coming to those that are aligned with. The party in power now, and that might that that might want to convince um, even the 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 opposition to want to align as well. No, you have some Labour Party people now uh, switching ranks, saying that look, Peter B should even apologize to. Or should <laughs> <start>. <laughs> I told you that I've said it time and again. Not everybody that is Labour is Labour, so that yeah. one has to be taken off the table. The other thing is that it's not just the APC, Moses. It is Mr. President himself. And how he goes about business. The British president do, does not does not particularly see any benefit in, in, in having enemies. He doesn't see any benefit in it. So he will do it in account to draw people as close as possible in account to himself. You know? Mm. Well, like if, why, 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 why should we fight when, when well, we can be friends? <laughs> That's the way of looking at things. And it will it may come in the name of social engineering, it may come in the name of consensus building. It may, it, it, it may come in the name of elite consensus, but believe me, this is one president that, I, I will say it again, does not see any virtue, any benefit, any advantage in people being adversaries when, 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 when they can be friends. So it is his own style of leadership. And you will see, people will come home smiling. Down, they will say, Tinibu, Tinibu, Mr. The president, president, pre you, you will see it. It is his way of doing things. So we'll have another say, Baba. It's not safe, Baba. <laughs> Be look, uh, um, Moses. Some go some people, maybe because of perhaps because it, it was Buhari, but a lot of people were not happy with the former president. Even from the core north. When he you see nothing about dissolved boards. Oh. I don't know that Buhari did a thing like that. In fact, appointees of the old administration, we are just left. From Jonathan's time, we are just left. They were left there like the Syrian governor. What the new cabal did when they came was that they rather had to strike a deal with the old guard and say, You already have the pathways and the channels of doing things. Let us, you know, let's become stakeholders in whatever is going on. And let's just and, and let's just, you know, keep keep the ball rolling. There's no need to to, to reinvent the wheel. But Tinubu is a bit more, he's more of a strategist, he understands statecraft, he knows the stakes. That's why you see one week, one sack, one week, one suspension, one week, one dismissal. I believe when he comes back, he will sack someone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but of course, the NPC is still there, you know. And mm -hmm. there are a number of agents like that that you will just come back and you. So the man is taking this time and carefully. And have you noticed? That I'm not a member of the APC, I'm not in the PDP, I'm not in the Liberal Party, I'm not in any party. But have you noticed that people are gradually. People are gradually beginning to reconsider. And I said all this was going to happen, and you see them happening. Mm. The one party, it, it, it doesn't have to be that people are going to join, join all become cabinet members of the APC. But you just find that it becomes a song on everybody's mouth. So we're watching. I, I, I don't mean to pray, sing for the president, but 2,000 or so, so offices can't be filled overnight. People are going to. But how does that? How does that? How does that um, add? How does that add value to the the political terrain in Nigeria? Ah, please, if you're asking me how that will add value to the country, or to the economy, 
or to the government? No, the political terrain. Let me answer it this way. They call it the ripple down effect. If people have voted for you, mobilized for you, hmm. ah, they spent money. Or you don't know that. You said political terrain, right? Political terrain, politics. Yes. Ah, they need to be there. When, when government will announce a bonus and say, from the letter school account or from so and so bonus, they are giving um, um, agencies, so rather, you, will, you may not even see the memo of the circular. Like this round fact now, is it not because somebody went and made an announcement in, uh, in, okay. is it in, in Kebbi and I just did? So, so, mm. so, yeah, so, somebody went to fly the kite. Otherwise, you will not know. But bonuses always fly. These bonuses, as they fly, one, people now recoup whatever it was they invested in the, in the election season. You ask him how, 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 how to, to the political process, right? They, they, they recoup back, they recoup what they, whatever it was they invested in the political season, that's one. Number two, at least the fact that you are in government, that you can see what is going on. Okay, good. So some of them, four years later, they, are, they want to run for reps, want to run for senate, want to run for governor. At least you have to stay within the system to grow in the system. So this is another, uh, but, but I mean, this, this is, this is, this is crap. This is politics at, at, at its barest, barefaced politics. But the question is, is it adding value to the economy or to the government or to Nigerians? Because when you fill up all these spots, of course, the government's wage bill is going to increase again. And when you are, you know, you know, I, I, I mean, it's like in, in, in a company, when you pay salaries away, it is because workers are, pro are, are, are providing services mm -hmm. that are making the company to grow. So are these people really going to be, they will drive government cars, go, official uh, no, well, there no, people no, there. number plate? There were people there before now. <laughs> official number plate, the, we only had the other day that they want to merge customs, FRS, and then, um, what's the other one now? Nimasa. That discussion was a car that was flowing. We didn't hear anything about it again. The reality is that more people in government does not necessarily mean efficiency. These things were just layer, you know, created layer upon layer upon layer upon layer, if only to cater to this kind of things. We have people who just come up, you know, have jobs, have jobs, just just have more and more jobs to, to make people to sort of um, not to feel the heat too much outside, come in and, you know, be part of the national kick. You know, you know apart from just as I said, the, the national kick is big enough to go around. That's what it means. People, everybody, ha just, you know, get, get your fork, get on the table, and take a share of the pie. So that way, people would speak less against government. People, would, you know, just feel like that they are part of the process. Ob observe this thing. A lot of people that leave Senate and House of Reps, and I don't get to election, how, where do they go? They become board members of either Federal Housing Authority, uh, Nimasa, all of the, those people, they are politicians. Mm. And that is kind of politicians. They are there to just, you know, as a buffer. Uh, didn't demand enough for governor in River State, Raku Kupita said, when he lost, well, he became the head of Nimasa, you know? So it's compensation for the job, for, 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 for being part of us. I mean, federal level, state level. The discussion we should be having now is, you can't be planning to run a lean, efficient government, and yet, you want to continue business as usual. I think that's not right. Then number two, the president should immediately denounce the ROMAFC and encourage now that his, his friends, okay, uh, are the Senate and now, he should encourage them to reject that bill outright when it comes, if at all, to go there. He, he needs to reject it outright. It is true, it is true. Reject it and say, we are not ready to accept any salary increase. We came to serve Nigerians. If he says that, you believe him by example. Anything other than that for me, amounts to, you know, just playing, 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 playing the ostrich. All right, let's go to the vanguard quickly. Um, <clears throat> cover page of the vanguard, um, banner headline here, stay clear of more borrowing, DMO cautions FG. And that one has sub riders, says 73.5% of revenue will be used to service debt in 2023. Advocates privatization, sale of government assets to reduce borrowing. Hmm. FG should heed DMO's warning. Analysts caution against further borrowing. And Dory, debt service revenue situation very precarious at Bidoye. All right. And uh, on top of the name, please, we have a PIA, NMDPRA clears air over midstream upstream operations. NGE president 
IPI, OT, ATA, congratulate AZ Anaba, New Exco, uh, Plat 2, about 14 killed in night attack on two communities. Kanu government reinstates anti graft commission boss, suspended by Gandhiji. UK businesses responding positively to Tinubu, British High Commissioner. Tribunal, Tinubu, INEC kick as OB tenders total PVCs in 32 states. All right. Uh, when we go further down, we, we have uh, this story. Um, okay. Ministerial slots, Tinubu may dump ex-governors, prefers technocrats, source. And then we have Benue Assembly, uh, recommend sack of 23 LG chairmen, others. Tinubu Shatima, governors, judges, others to get 114%, that's 114% salary increase, RMA, uh, RMAFC. And then we have uh, uh, this one here, doctors raise alarm over suspected cases of rabies in Kaduna. My daughter excited, I'll see burner boy. Rema in Nigeria, Bill Gates. All right, so yes, these are the headlines that we have in the Vanguard newspaper. Mm. Go ahead, go ahead. Government is here to settle down, so you see a lot of speculative um, um, writing. They, they, quoting the source and saying that government is, that the president may prefer to have um, technocrats. technocrats rather than. Well, it was a promise. Like, actually, it was a campaign promise. So I'm not surprised that this is coming up at this time. It was a campaign promise when they said that the president was going to embark on massive recruitment of technocrats. Nigeria, Nigeria has a lot of... If I was even expecting that. They said technocrats will be... will constitute the core mm. of the special advisors that he's even appointing. So far, we do respect the people that are, in, that are there. A number of them are experienced in public service. Bala Hadiza Bala Usman. Her father was a professor, I think, vice chancellor of OAE, a notable historian in Nigeria. Um, um, Dela Laki, of course, has been around for as long as you can think of it. Um, Wale Edun, these are, did I get the name right? Is it Yemi Edun, Wale Edun? Wale. Wale Edun. Um, Olu I, I think it's Yemi, I'm not sure now. <laughs> I'm not sure now. Yeah, but, no, but I think it's Wale Edun, um, the former commission of finance in Lagos. These are known people. We would expect that um, when we hear some names, the ones we hear following those will even be um, um, will be more and more techno, you know, more and more more of technocrats. Mm. I mean, there, there are a lot of them in overseas universities, Nigerian Nigerian um, um, scholars who are you know ready and willing to serve their country. So we need to. The president will have to start early in the day to to reduce the number of politicians who, who are well, jostling to be him. very close to him. Oh. In terms of undertaking the day-to-day -day running of government, he cannot afford, to, I, I, I mean, it's something he has done before, so we know that this is what, now he's president and the stakes are higher. He needs, we, we need to be sure that the, the people he's appointing that, that, that will see him on a daily basis have some people who understand the figures and what the data is saying, seriously speaking. Then for the ministers, of course, there, there has to be a blend technocrats and politicians All right. because it matters. Uh, so let's hope that um, by the time government settles down, Nigerians can look at the, look at the, the, his core of ministers and advisors and they can beat their chest. Even if the president was, was not your choice, you can look at him and say, I think he has a good team. Mm. And that's what, I, that's, that's what I think the president should be, should be gunning for. All right then. Well, this is how far we can go today on uh, the newspaper review on VOP this morning. Up next on VOP this morning, how justifiable is it for the president and other elected politicians to get a pay rise of 114% at a time like this? Let's talk about uh, that when we return. Stay with us.